Half in the bag. Jay and Mike are frauds. Whoa! What the hell's going on? Everything's leaning to one side. It's like the house is sinking. What are you talking about? It looks the same as it always does. You don't see that? I'm hearing creaking sounds now. Yeah, Mike, you're just not thinking straight. Maybe six or seven beers will help clear your mind. It always does. Let's have a seat in these chairs before us. Oh, hi, Mr. Plinkett. Yeah, hi. What you got there? Oh, it's just some book I picked up at the library. Well, actually, I picked it up at the abandoned shack next to the library. Yeah, now that I'm done with Stephanie Meyer's Twilight, I figured I could use something new to read. Out loud. I'll be on the can. Jay, that book looks eerily similar to the one from The Evil Dead. Hey, speaking of The Evil Dead, have you seen The Evil Dead? Or do you mean that new remake? No, I meant the DVD special edition of the original film. What? Did you mean the Book of the Dead edition or the Ultimate Edition DVD? What's the difference? Or maybe you were talking about the limited edition Blu-ray. Is that all the same movie? Or did you mean the limited edition tin of Evil Dead 2? <laughs> or there's also the 25th anniversary Blu-ray of Evil Dead 2. What? Or maybe you were talking about the Book of the Dead edition of Evil Dead 2. <laughs> Don't get me started on Army of Darkness. Why do you have all those? Because my life is an empty shell. What an asshole. Evil Dead is a remake of The Evil Dead. Mike, what did you think of Evil Dead? Jay, what did you think of The Evil Dead? The Evil Dead? Oh, I love The Evil Dead. What did you think of Evil Dead starring people? It, it did have actors in it. Well, I, I will say I did enjoy watching the movie. I had a lot of fun in the theater. Uh, I, I chuckled a lot which I was pleasantly surprised by because the trailers and stuff make this look like, you know, a more serious movie. It's not campy Evil Dead 2. Uh, but the seriousness is what made it amusing to me because the gore and stuff is still completely ludicrous. So I laughed a lot through the movie and the we saw it in a packed theater. And uh, if you're going to see it, that is definitely the way to see it because the theater uh, ate it up. The yeah. crowd ate it up. It plays really well with an audience. It's like if you take the basic premise or plot and, and you give it to a different director uh, who has a different visionary style with it, a diff wants to take it in a different direction, then that's kind of what this is. It's, it's different than a remake that's just a remake. Yeah, I, I, one of the better recent remakes, in my opinion, was the Dawn of the Dead remake where it takes the initial idea and just does something completely different with it. Yeah. And what that had that this one doesn't is sort of a, a, a strong sort of uh, authorial stamp put on it. This movie feels like a lot of the sequences are just trying to be in the style of Sam Raimi. Um, there's the, the shots of the woods, the demon vision shots that really feel out of place in this version, mm -hmm. but they're in there because it's Evil Dead, so you have to put it in there. Yeah. So it's sort of a movie that seems to be like struggling to find its own identity. Well, I, know, I didn't get that impression as much. I, the, the, the fan service shots stuck out, the forest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a couple of those and, you know. There's the, the car, the classic cars the cars in the movie. The in there in the background, and then, you know, there's a couple of snap zooms, camera work there. Um, so that, that stuff's in there, but I, I, 
I liked the look of the movie. If it was just a movie and if you didn't have to compare it to the original originals, um, it, it, it had a nice look to it. Um, nice atmosphere. Nice atmosphere, nice production design. They really liked their shallow focus. Yes, like I noticed that. Like, <laughs> yeah, It's almost like a lot of the movie is sort of uh, subverting your expectations based on mm -hmm. the fact that you've seen the original. Yeah. So I'd be curious to see how this would play to someone that's never seen the original. They'd probably like it more than I did, <laughs> just yeah. as a standalone movie. I mean, there are scenes in there that, that are callback scenes, like, you know, when he gets infected in his hands. to cut his hand off. Yeah. That happens to a character in this movie. It's a different character. It happens, numerous hands and arms get ripped off mm -hmm. in this movie. Um, but there's, there's stuff like that in there. But I get the feeling like this director, writer, director was trying to do his own thing with the material to a certain degree. Yeah. Still has to throw in the references, but still trying to make it his own movie. Yeah, well I wonder how much of that is the influence of Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, because they were the producers on this. Yeah. Uh, if, if maybe the director wanted to go more in his own style, but they were like, well, you gotta put this in there because it's Evil Dead, you know, things like that. That's kind of what it felt like to me. Well, well, that's an important thing to mention too, uh, is the story, because you, you said, what, what would just a regular person who walks in and watches this movie think without having seen the original yeah. Sam Raimi movies? And they would think, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> because there, there is no story well, Th there is a mild story in this, there, yeah. they, which I, I, I haven't seen Evil Dead or Evil Dead 2 in a while. Um, I, I, I've seen Evil Dead 2 a lot. The, <laughs> the original Evil Dead I've seen a couple times and it's been a while. But I've probably seen both of them more than any other movie I've yeah. ever seen. Well, then you can fill in the, the blanks here. Okay. In, in this movie, there's, um, there's like a series of things that happen in the Book of the Dead. Uh, someone has to burn their skin with hot water, someone has to cut their face off, yeah. and then this happens before this like big thing happens. Um, and I don't remember those kind of like, those plot points in the original. I, the original was someone spoke pas passages out of the book and all hell broke loose. Yes. And then and the, the, the simplicity to that is that part of that movie's charm. The simplicity yeah. and the inventiveness of the way it's executed yeah. is what makes that movie so great because it really feels like just a descent into madness. Mm -hmm. And that I felt was one negative of this movie is that the original movie, there's lots of really sort of bizarre, surreal sequences. It's not just people get possessed by demons. There's that great part where Bruce Campbell's looking in the mirror and then he touches it and it turns to water. And there's another sequence where a light bulb fills up with blood and it explodes everywhere. And really sort of just where you really feel like the character is losing his mind. And then all the other demons are mocking him and laughing at him. Uh, so that's something those movies have, and this one feels more straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of people get possessed, and there's no weird stuff. It's just more, it's more straight, like, and there isn't even, like, a, a scene where that happens, where all the characters, are, all the other uh, demons are sort of ganging up on him or mocking him, and it's just sort of one person fights a demon, and then another person fights another demon. It's very sort of episodic like that. Yeah, yeah, and and... Back to my point about just some average person walking in and seeing this, they would find a plot there. And, and that, that's, uh, they threw in this movie, The New Evil Dead, threw in a couple of twists. Like the reason they go to the cabin isn't just, we're teenagers and we're going to the cabin to drink. Right. They, they're trying to cure uh, the main actress out of her heroin addiction. Yeah. Which is like, okay, that's different. They're trying to get her to quit cold turkey. Yeah, and yeah. You're just going to hole up in this yeah. abandoned cabin. Well, it was their family's cabin. It was their family's cabin, but this but, cabin in the middle of the woods, yeah, isolated, yeah. away from the world. And I like that there wasn't any reference to like, I don't get any cell phone reception out here. It's like, if you don't mention it, people aren't going to be concerned about it. Right. And I appreciated that they didn't have that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it could have taken place at any time. It was, yeah. you know, it wasn't, no one was talking about MySpace. Is that the new thing everyone's into? The MySpace? Yeah. It's, I heard that's getting popular. I, I heard too, yeah. Is that where you, you, you know, you have friends? Mm -hmm. Like you have your top eight friends. Oh yeah, top eight friends. Everyone's always friends with Tom, I've noticed. You can have a song on your page? Really? Yeah. How do you have a song on your page? You don't understand. There was something in the woods. 
to the average person watching this, they'll see like, okay, that's the premise, and then they find a book, and then, you know. And then a guy just reads it out loud, despite all the frequent warnings on every page saying, don't fucking read this ever. And he opens the, <laughs> the book up, despite it being closed with barbed wire and all this stuff. And he's curious, he's an English teacher. Yeah. So maybe he's, you know, he's like a book. Oh, I wanna look at that, I'm an English teacher. But it's like, that's the premise, and they, they threw in a, some mild plot where this happens, this happens, and this happens, and the, the, the evil goes around from one character to another. So plot, paper thin, yeah. they made up for that with all the gore. And the original one made up for it with campy gore. Yeah. And, and that's, there's two different types of movies. And, and, and it, I actually appreciate the fact that they didn't try to make a Sam Raimi type campy gory movie. I, I know that was a, a complaint that a lot of people had when they first started seeing trailers for this new one. Like, oh, it's not campy, it's not funny. But I, I think a lot of people, when they talk about what they like about Evil Dead, they're really talking about Evil Dead 2. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, the goofy one. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one, they tried to make a horror movie. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, you can see all the seams and makeup is held together with duct tape and there's a moon that is clearly matted into the sky. Like, that's part of that movie's charm. And you can't reproduce that. No. It was very bizarre seeing this in a theater because you don't see wide release movies like this ever anymore. Yeah. It sort of harkens back to a different era where uh, a horror movie didn't have to be good, it just had to be memorable. Yeah. Like when people think about Reanimator, you know, the first thing, I actually like Reanimator a lot, but the first thing people talk about is, oh, that's the movie that has the scene where the severed head goes down on the naked blonde chick. You know, that's what people remember. And there's a number of sequences like that in this movie where like, oh, that's the movie where, you know, this happens yeah. without giving yeah. anything away. Uh, yeah, lots of fun, inventive, uh, very uh, explicit gore. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's kind of all it has that's memorable. The characters are sort of boring. The well, actors are boring. Yeah, let's let's move on to that that <laughs> category. The biggest complaint. Yeah. My, my biggest complaint is the actors. Um, other than my secondary complaint is the contact lenses that the the demons wore, which which are the ones you can just buy on the internet. <laughs> they're the they're the same ones that that Darth Sidious wears in Star Wars. I like in the, the original Evil Dead that their eyes just go pure white. Yeah, and that's yeah. more memorable. I, I like that better. This is sort of like we're gonna make them as scary as we can, and, and it's like ah, like that looks bad. Oh my God. There were a couple moments in this where it's it was cringeworthy to me, but I think I I don't think I'm a human anymore. Mm. I think I've lost my humanity because I watch a movie like this and I'm just like, you know, like there's there's a scene there, the, one of the creatures is shooting a nail gun. Yeah. And people are getting hit by the nail gun. And everyone's like, ooh, 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 and then and then and then he's got to pull the nails out. And he's pulling the nails out. And everyone's oh, oh, <laughs> and, and I'm just like, yeah, it's I think fake. It's fake. See, I, I watch stuff like that, and I appreciate it more on a technical level, like yeah. watching it and saying, oh, I, you know, wondering how they did that or knowing how they did that. I mean, like, they executed that really well. No, you know, for a two-hour-long movie, I got more horror out of watching the basketball player snap his leg in half. Oh, my God. I, you know, so that, that this movie, uh, it's, it's filled with so much gore <laughs> and blood that it almost becomes desensitizing after a while. I, I've been desensitized to gore since I was like 10 years old. That's why I watch stuff like this and I just chuckle. Yeah. Uh, especially this movie. The things that get me with like gore or horror effects are the more subtle things, mm -hmm. like little things, like someone, like the nails thing, like that's a simple little thing, but mm -hmm. a character just slicing their arm off or a chainsaw getting shoved through the head, like that I just sort of laugh at now. What the hell happened? What are you talking about? What the fuck is that? What are these noises? What's going on? Whoa! Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh! Oh, 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 oh fuck! Jesus Christ! What the hell? What the fuck just happened? 
What? Oh my god. Jay, this is hell. Well, of course this is hell. We live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No, Milwaukee's much worse than hell. This is really hell. What are you talking about, crazy man? Get back over here so we can continue discussing the Evil Dead remake directed by some guy. Okay. But I find this a little strange that the house just fell into hell. I, I would say, as far as recent horror movies go, this is one of the best ones I've oh, seen yeah, in yeah. a long time. As far as that goes, I'm just thinking about remakes. I, yeah. Like, and I was while I was watching this, I, I kept thinking of that, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, and and just how like bland it was. Yeah. There was no like, no cleverness to it. It didn't have any kind of like freshness. Right. And and this went all out on the gore, but at the same time, it was lacking that. It kind of felt like that. All these like boring actors. That was the weakest part of it is that you just don't care about anyone. The first maybe half hour, 45 minutes of the movie, it was just like, you don't understand. Well, that's that's sort of the the what I was wrestling with after the movie was thinking about like it was really nice to see a movie this unapologetically trashy and violent because mm -hmm. you don't see movies like this anymore. Yeah. But at the same time, is that enough? You know. Right. And it, I don't know. I don't think it is. Like Cabin in the Woods, as I think we mentioned when we talked about that movie, it's it's sort of gonzo. It's crazy. By the end, it's so off the rails that it's refreshing to see a movie like that. And this is, you know, it's, it is it is what it is. Yeah, I, th I think, too, it seemed like a contradiction almost, the the quality of the look of the movie and the the effects and the, the way everything was shot seemed contradictory to the gross out stuff. Mm. If I see a movie like that's so excessive in its gore, and, and I wanted the movie to look cheap too, like, <laughs> like, like Dead Alive sure. or, or something on that level. Or the original Evil Dead. Or the original <laughs> Evil Dead. Oh, you bastards. Why are you torturing me like this? Why? That's kind of how I feel about comedy too. Like comedy plays better when it looks cheap. Mm -hmm. like you look at the original Airplane, right. and there's the part where a guy gets stabbed in the back yeah. and you can see the padding on his back and like the plane, it's almost like you can see the string. Mm -hmm. When it looks cheap, it's better. Yeah. And that's the, the weird contradiction with this movie is that it's technically a much better film than the original Evil Dead, but that's what makes it not as good of a film. Going to die tonight. Well, another thing I like about this movie, and, and it, it's really hard to talk about this movie without comparing it to the original, but blah, 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 blah. But as a, as a horror movie, um, it, it just, it went for the jugular. It went for the gore, it went for the, the gross out violence, and it didn't fall into the trappings of all the other horror movies that are out where you, you have to roll your eyes and just go get through this stuff. <laughs> there, there was the little dumb plot about the brother and sister and their mother, and, and it worked into the story well enough, but it didn't have all the, the, the cliches, and not cliche in a good way, where they do it tongue in cheek. Right, but where like Cabin in the Woods. Where it's just annoying. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, the, there's the bimbo character the big tits, who who sleeps with everybody. There's the, the you know all those those stereotypical characters: the yeah. jock guy, the the hip nerd who's, who's going to hook up to the satellite to yeah. call for help. And where there's all those characters, the characters just were they kind of just seemed like regular people. Yeah. 
and, and they weren't too over the top as far as the stereotypes go because it's so easy just to plug them all in to make like memorable characters. Yeah. This is the part where the dumb jock guy dies. This is the part where the bimbo dies. Right. Is, and so like, all the all the things that Cabin in the Woods commented on, basically. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, but the the Cabin in the Woods did it uh, tongue in cheek. Some movies actually still do that. Yes. For real. <laughs> it's amazing, but it's true. And and when you see this, and the the premise is a bunch of young people go to a cabin, and then it's like, oh god. And that's why everyone was was sort of scared about this movie. Yeah. Um, at least I was, because you see it and you go, oh great. It's gonna be all those characters. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna go. We're gonna have a great time, bro, in this cabin. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the brewskis, and then yeah. they, they have to. We have to go through all this shit, and they stop, and you know, and they blah blah blah. blah. And and this didn't have that. It took the characters, and they they weren't good characters. That's they weren't memorable. It, but it they almost watered, went too far the other way, where yeah. they were completely forgettable. They watered them down to. To a uh, somewhat realistic level. Yeah, I do think it was sort of a missed opportunity with the the character trying to kick drugs, mm. like her, you know, quitting cold turkey. Uh, I, I was thinking early on, like it'll be really interesting to see her try and fight off all these demons while going through withdrawals. Mm. Like I thought that would have been kind of cool, but they didn't really do anything with it. That whole sort of setup is kind of abandoned once the the mayhem starts. One thing we should mention is that this is probably one of the hardest R movies I've ever seen, but there are parts where you can kind of tell what they must have trimmed to get, to avoid getting in the NC-17. Uh, there's a demon lady at the end that's completely nude, but she has no nude features. There's like an overhead shot and she has no butt. And it's very bizarre. And I think that maybe they digitally removed her butt crack to avoid an NC-17. Well. Why would a butt crack give you an NC-17? Because it's a creepy demon thing that's covered in blood. It, like the, the, the mixture of violence and sexuality is something that oh. the MPAA doesn't like. Oh, okay. But that's, that was something that stuck out to me. She had no nipples and she had no butt. And it was very bizarre. Do you think that they made it rain blood at the end to get around the fact that it was blood? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I actually don't. H have you ever seen, there's a director, his name's Quentin Tarantino. I've heard of him, he, yes. He made a movie called Kill Bill. And there's a sequence in the movie that switches to black and white because yeah. um, What's-Her-Face is hacking people w with a sword and there's <laughs> blood everywhere. Yeah. And that's like where they go, that's too much blood, mm -hmm. this is NC-17. And in the end of this movie, uh, it starts raining red. Yeah. So everything's red. And, and do you think that's a technicality? Like, now we can have blood everywhere because you can't tell what's rain. It's all and red anyway. Red. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Because it's like, well, it's not blood. <laughs> that's not blood, that's all over her, that's rain. Yeah. You know, like it's red rain, like, uh, it's not actual blood from a person, it's, it's, it's fantasy yeah. things that are. Obviously it's supposed to, you're supposed to get the impression that it's raining blood, of but course, of everything course. is red at that point. But they never so, say it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's when I, that's when I'm watching it. I'm like, wow, is this an NC-17? Because there is blood everywhere, <laughs> and more blood than would have been in that Kill Bill sequence. Yeah. So Jay, would you recommend uh, Evil Dead? Yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, I, I think its heart was in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, There's some bland elements. Uh, everything outside of the gore was sort of generic, but it's a step in the right direction. And if this does well, then maybe horror will get weird and crazy again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would also recommend it. Uh, not if you don't like blood or the sight of blood or gore or very disturbing, creepy things. That's who I would recommend it to the most though. You, you, you uh, trick your friend into going to see the movie with you, your friend that doesn't like gore or blood or anything, and then you just watch their reaction through the movie and laugh at them. Or you take your children. Oh, sure, yeah. T tell them it's a Madagascar 3. So, Jay, did you hear that they're planning to do a sequel to this new remake? And they're also planning to do a sequel to Army of Darkness, and these two franchises will somehow tie together. So there'll be an Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness 2 
which no. is Evil Dead 4? Technically, Army of Darkness 2 would be Evil Dead 4. Okay. Evil Dead 2, the remake sequel, will be a reboot of the remake sequel. It'll be Evil Dead Part 3, which is the sequel to the original The Evil Dead, which is not a remake of Evil Dead 2, but they're also planning to make an Evil Dead 3, which will be a sequel to Evil Dead 2 and the original Evil Dead. And Army of Darkness 4, they're also planning an Army of Darkness 5, but Army of Darkness 4 is a sequel and a prequel to Evil Dead 2 and Evil Dead 2.5. Why would they do any of this? What? Wait a minute. Do you hear that? I, I don't hear anything. Oh, come on. You're telling me you can't hear that? Mike, I think you may be losing it. What? I'm gonna swallow your fat and song, you fuckface! Mr. Blinken is a Kandarian demon! I'm gonna rent every member of your family while spilling this shit on the walls! Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 Oh my god! Fuck you, asshole! Get your face in my fucking head! And then the demon gets his head cut off and fucking creamed corn shoots out of his neck stump. <sighs> you see, that's the kind of stuff that the new Evil Dead was lacking. What's going on in here? Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Plinkett. Mike was just playing pretend. Well, did playing pretend really require violently dismembering my fucking mailman? <laughs> did you do that? What?